After killing Timbersaw, I have 800 gold working toward getting Blink Dagger as soon as possible. In between, I bought Raindrop and Trunkle Boots. The Trunkle is for sustain, and the Raindrop allows me to fight and survive. And I can always appreciate having that little bit of mana regeneration. By the way, this is my personal preference and playstyle of playing support. I almost always get Raindrop, I think it makes a huge difference. But if you guys want to skip everything and just get Blink Dagger right away after the Brown Boots, that also makes sense. You just gotta make it work by proving yourself. Right here, again as a support, it is my job to be that annoying piece of prick to the enemy. I managed to steal the last sets of the two large creeps. I am a very happy shaker. I pay attention to the timer, it's almost 14 so I stack this camp and run back to Spectre that was the plan but I saw that the middle lane was shoving in and was empty so I immediately used TP scroll. This is not an overreaction, all these experience and gold were too valuable to pass. At 14.33 I buy smoke and observer ward. At 14.55, I stack this camp again, and I'm going to solo smoke myself, go for the bounty run, and then sneak into their jungle and provide vision to my team. Right here I just use my Echo Sun. Some of you will say, you're crazy bro, but I will say, it is worth it bro. I just got 300 to 400 gold out of it, and I'm getting very close to the Blink Dagger. I double stack this camp at 16. And there, at 1619, I purchased Blink Dagger as a potion 5 Earthshaker hard support. I am now ready to rock and roll. After getting Blink Dagger, I sort of die right away, and from the way the enemy team was playing, I suspected they have a vision in the high ground. I used Echo Slam to secure a kill, maybe we didn't need it, but I felt like it was the right choice to secure the kill. 
They are playing super aggressive with a lot of confidence, so I must suspect that they must have a ward right there. I purchased more sentries because we will need it to push the bottom tier 1 tower against Ricky. And that was a big acclimation, wasn't it? From this point, I was very confident this game is more or less over. First off, look at how much my Spectre is farmed. He's level 17 at minute 22. He has the Visor Blade, Yasha, Power Trace, and Ring of Health. Most likely, he will complete the Manta style very soon, and he'll get Vanguard into Abyssal Blade. Also, Earthshaker is too overfarmed for a Potion 5 hard support. The enemy Team Wrestle is level 12. I'm level 12. That says a lot about the game. I clicked Root Mother and gained information that she's got Dazzle Later and Orb of Carissa. And as you can see in the minimap, we have taken down all of their tier 1 towers already, which means we got the mech control. So I decided to get Medallion as my next item. It will be a very fast free rush on for our team. And the Aegis will secure the win. We can easily destroy all of their tier 2 towers and prepare to push high ground. There are a few more things I want to talk about before ending this video. Number 1, Solo Aquaslam. At 2410, I was watching the minimap, my Wraith King was coming toward me, and the enemy Pango is on my tail. So at this point, I could already visualize using Solo Aquaslam when Pango is about to cast his ultimate. Then Wraith King will be ready to chain stun, and Pango dies. This is the simple but the most important point I want to make about playing Shaker support. Never be shy about using the Solo Aquaslam. Number 2, Map Control. At 24.51, I dewarded and put down a vision right there. As long as we are guarding this area, the enemy team has literally nowhere to farm. I asked my team to use this vision as an advantage and play around this area. At 26, I knew that the enemy team was desperate for any vision, so I predicted the ward would be right there and I was right. Number 3, BKB. Lastly, around minute 29, I got BKB. Usually, it's a 4 staff, but for this game, if the game had gone any further or evened out, BKB would have been the right choice because imagine if I blink in to Aku Slam and Ricky predicts that and uses smoke screen, then I'm done. Like, I'm silenced. I cannot use Aku Slam, I cannot fissure, I can't do anything. 
Earthshaker is all about using Aqua Slam at the right time, right place, and the right target. So my plan was to activate BKB first, then Blink In, and then Aqua Slam. By doing this, I am 100% guaranteed to use Aqua Slam at anywhere, anytime, every fight. I think it makes a big difference, so I prioritize BKB over 4 staff just for this game. Anyways, around minute 29, once again, we team wipe them, and then the game was essentially over at that point. They will never recover from this. That is it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching.